Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Glenn Scrivener, and um, I'm an evangelist working on the south coast in England, uh, but I'm actually from Australia uh, originally, so my accent's a bit funny. Um, although a German philosopher um, at breakfast yesterday picked up, he said, I'm Hey, I'm thinking that you are from Australia, but you've been living in England for quite some time. And most English people don't even pick that up. So, so he, was, he was right on the money. Um, I, uh, I work as an evangelist, um, and uh, I'm part of this organization called Speak Life. Uh, we used to be called Revival Media, we're now called Speak Life, just to spotlight the fact that we are a proclamation evangelism charity. And we're, we're really into speaking the word of Christ to people. Uh, a few verses that are of very important to us, uh, Matthew 12, verse 34, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I often ask people, you know, does the world need more evangelists? And uh, the answer to that question is, it depends. It really depends on the evangel that people are sharing. Because what you know and understand, you will photocopy into the lives of those who listen to you. So Jesus spoke to some very keen evangelists in Matthew 23, verse 15. He spoke to these Bible guys, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, and they were zealous evangelists, weren't they? Jesus said, you travel over land and sea in order to win a single convert, and then when you make them a convert, you make them twice as much a son of hell as you are. Okay, so this is zealous evangelism, committed evangelism. In one sense, it's biblical evangelism because they know a lot of Bible, and yet they're multiplying Satan's kingdom, not Christ's kingdom. Does the world need more evangelists? Depends, doesn't it? It depends. Do we know the evangel? Is the evangel full in our hearts? Is the goodness of the good news, the power of the good news, bubbling over in us into words? Because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. I used to be a very keen uh, street preacher. I still love to go out onto the streets and talk to people about Jesus. Uh, a friend of mine, though, uh, stopped me and said, uh, Glenn, why don't you stop talking about Jesus just for a little bit and maybe learn the gospel a little bit better? Because he'd heard some of the things that I was saying. And I said to him, I don't need to learn the gospel. I know the gospel. Other people need the gospel. I'll stay right here. And my friend persisted, and, and he got me to go to uh, a theology class where people like Mike Reeves, um, who is doing lots of stuff here at ELF, people like Mike Reeves were teaching on this class, going very deep with things like the Trinity, going very deep with things like Adam and Christ, going very deep with things like union with Christ. And I remember thinking every week, you know, do I know the gospel? I do and I don't. And that's true today. Do I know the gospel? Yes. Could I know it better? You bet. And going deeper with the gospel does not make proclamation more complicated. It makes it simpler. Because when you truly understand something, then you're able to make it simple. Uh, it's a shallowness in understanding the gospel that will actually make your evangelism more complicated. So we're very passionate about going deep with the gospel, deep with theological education, and then speaking the word of life to people. A few different things uh, that we do, Christ-centered evangelism, church-focused mission, Bible-rich training, world-reaching resources. That's kind of what we're on, on about. Christ-centered evangelism... Um, for so much evangelism, Jesus might be the solution to a problem that has been defined apart from him. He might be that. There might be some kind of sin problem in your gospel outline, and then Jesus might come along and do a transaction on the cross and solve that sin problem so that now you can go on your way. Um, is that Christ-centered evangelism? I think we can do better. What about... What about a God who is defined by Jesus? What about the world being defined by Jesus? What about me and my everyday life being defined by Jesus? Not just Jesus, the mechanism that gets you out of hell. Um, what does Christ-centered evangelism really look like? We want to go deep with that. We want to go deep with church-focused mission. It is tragic to me, the number of uh, evangelists I meet who have no connection with church. None whatsoever. It is a crying shame. I don't, I don't even know... 
how to understand that person's relationship with Christ. They say they have a personal relationship with Christ, but they don't have a personal relationship with his body. Um, and yet so much evangelism despises the church, neglects the church, tries to go over the top of church to get mission done because it doesn't believe the church is getting it done. Church is God's mission <coughs> strategy for the world. Church is it. I was speaking to an evangelist two weeks ago. They said, I really fear that the church is going to miss the next big move of God. Have you heard people say that? The church is not ready for the next big move of God. Rubbish. The church is the move of God. Okay? The church is what God is doing in this world. And whatever we do in evangelism, it's got to be equipping the church for its evangelistic task. Another massive verse for us is Ephesians 4 verse 10. Christ has ascended on high. He's given gifts to men. He's given apostles and prophets, pastor teachers and evangelists in order to equip God's people for their works of evangelistic service. So the evangelist is not simply the person who gets it done, right? The evangelist is the person who equips the saints to fulfill their evangelistic calling. And so training has got to be a massive part. If you call yourself an evangelist, yes, proclaim the gospel, be uh, involved in that, but also be involved in training up other evangelists and equipping the wider body in its evangelistic task. Bible-rich training. In a second, I'll let you know about uh, an opportunity we've got uh, to train with us to go deep into the Bible so that we can be simple and profound in our proclamation. And uh, uh, world-reaching resources. Um, uh, Greg Pritchard, who um, is sort of head honcho at ELF, he's always wanting me to talk about um, my videos, uh, and I've always resisted, but uh, I'll capitulate now. Um, uh, three, two, one, this is our gift to you. Um, there's probably more books around than there are people. If you want to give that book away to other people, do it. If you want to take one, read for yourself, and give the other one away, do it. It's an evangelistic book that is to be read by Christians. That is, it's meant to evangelize Christians because Christians don't know the gospel. Of course, Christians. <laughs> True story, I see more people, I, I think, it's hard to judge whether people are truly coming to the Lord or not. It's hard to judge these things. But I think I see more people coming to the Lord when I do evangelism training than I do when I do evangelism. People wanting to come and learn, how do I answer this question in apologetics? How do I do this? How do I do that? And they don't really know the gospel at all. I have people coming up to me afterwards in tears saying, I, I never knew God loved me. I never knew Jesus was like that. I never knew the gospel was this good. Loads of people come up and, and say these kinds of things. Christians need to know the gospel. So first thing, this book is for us to enjoy Jesus and to enjoy a Jesus-centered gospel. And once you've read it, Pass it on to a friend, yeah? So that's our gift to you. Freely we give, freely you receive, and freely you receive, freely you give. How about that? Let's, let's get the flow going. Um, 3, 2, 1 kind of began as a, a little gospel video, and uh, let's just watch one minute of it. 3, 2, 1. The story of God, the world, and you. 3. God is three persons united in love. In the beginning, there were three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Not three different gods, one God who is an unbreakable unity of three. A triunity, or trinity. The trinity is not a maths problem or an ancient riddle. It's the good news that God is love. Forever, the Father has loved his Son in the unity of the Spirit. How do we picture this? Well, the Son of God is the image of God. He gives us our window onto God's life. So, for instance, picture his baptism. There we see the Holy Spirit descending on him while the Father declares, You are my Son who I love. With you I am well pleased. That's a snapshot of God's eternal life. The Father has always been loving his Son with the joy of the Holy Spirit. But this love was too good to keep to themselves. The God of love wants to share. And so the Father made a world through His Son and by His Spirit because He wants billions more children to join the family. You and I were made to hear His verdict. You are my child who I love. With you, I am well pleased. The meaning of life is to find our place in the three. So that's the beginning of 3, 2, 1. Um, it might already be in your language. It's in about 10 different languages, translating into at least six more. Um, 
If you want it in your language and you don't see it on our website, get in touch and perhaps you could be part of the translation uh, into your own language. So that's 321. It's a video, it's a course, it's a book, it's a tract, it's a website. Um, so that's our gift to you. Um, no time for that. Last thing though, uh, do you want to train with us? I, I mentioned about the Bible Rich training. Uh, we're offering uh, an evangelistic apprenticeship with us alongside degree level theological training. So you'll get your degree level theolo theological training with people like Mike Reeves, um, and you'll get it alongside the context of an evangelistic ministry. You'll come alongside us and uh, we'll go out and preach the gospel together. If that sounds like fun to you, sounds like fun to me, um, take one of these uh, or ask me about it afterwards. Brilliant. Thanks so much.